Hi, I'm Mark, and this is the Rabbit Models 40 inch P38 with our 3D printed spinners. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can install a simple and lightweight wire landing gear so that you can take this plane off and land it on smooth surfaces, as it was originally designed to be a belly lander. But adding a scale landing gear really makes it look great. And then in this video, I'm also going to show you how you can add 3D printed wheels, tires, and struts that we have that really make it look great. Okay, now here you can see the underside of the P38 with the wire landing gear. And you can see the speed controllers, the motors, the receiver. And we're going to be installing the main landing gear first which the first step you have to do is bend it into this interesting shape. Um, now I'm using wire, music wire that's 0 0.055 inches, which is 1.4 millimeters in diameter. It's a little bit smaller than 1 16th, which is 0 0.062. And the reason I did that is because this smaller size wire is lighter and it's a little bit easier to bend. I'm going to show you exactly how to bend it. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is make a mirror copy of this wire by bending a new wire. And the first step is to make this first 90 degree angle. This axle is one inch long, so I'm going to measure one inch using my ruler. It's not super critical, and you've got to have a strong pair of pliers to do this. It's not super critical to be exactly one inch, but make a right angle bend. You might have to bend a little bit extra to get the angle to be 90 degrees. Hmm. Like that. Then the main strut here on this plane is 4 inches long. So I'm going to measure 4 inches for the next bend. 1, 2, 3, 4. This one is critical. It's got to be exactly four inches to match the first gear that I bent. And we're going to go this direction with it. So here we go. Mm. Now that's more than 90 degrees, so I'm going to bend it back just a little bit. You can see here it's a mirror image. That's what I mean by a mirror image. Of the first gear. The next two bends, two inches out, and it's going to go in this direction. So I'm going to measure about two inches right here and bend it that way. Another 90 degree angle. You can see that this is not standing up straight because of the way I bent it. This is adjustable. You just keep making these adjustments, make sure everything is 90 degrees and square. Fortunately, this wire is pretty easy to, to work with. Okay. Next bend is one inch out. Use the inch side instead of the millimeter side. Okay, that's about an inch right there. Hmm. There we have a mirror image of the first one. And you can see the two gear legs are the same height. This needs to be uh, the same direction this way and 90 degrees all the way around. And you just make those little adjustments with your pliers until it's right. All right, once the main landing gear has been bent to the right shape, it's time to install it in the fuselage. And according to the directions, the gear leg is going to be three inches back from the leading edge. That's where that, that gear leg is going to meet, this, the fuselage. And 
two inches back from there is where you're going to make a little hole in the foam. And the way this works is you push this wire through and you have to kind of bend it a little bit to make it fit into that hole that you made. You see I'm, I'm stretching it a little bit here. Put it through the hole and then just sort of put it in there like that. There it is. The gear leg is on the inside of the side piece. And once it's there, you can see it's going to move around. Which all you need to do is scotch tape this to the bottom of the fuselage. Once this gear is installed with the tape, the forces of the landing gear are transferred to the bottom of the airplane. So it's very strong but extremely lightweight. You don't need any extra supports in there. And that is about as simple as it gets. Now here's a view of the bottom of the model. And you can see the landing gear on the left side has been taped down. I wanted to show you the taping. It's very simple. And the landing gear has been installed so that the center of the wheel will be lined up with the center of the motor nacelle. And here's a wheel. I'll just stick it on. It's going to end up in that position. So that way it's straight. You have to adjust the landing gear so that it's not tilted one way or the other. It should be straight. And of course you can adjust this landing gear before you tape it down so that everything is lined up perfect like this. I'll show you the side view too. There we go. Okay, now we're taking a look at the front of the airplane. Obviously this is the bottom side of the airplane. To look at the front landing gear installation. The front landing gear wire is bent much in the same way as you saw me do the main landing gear. It's attached on this side with tape. But the landing gear is bent in a different way to accommodate the wheel. It's called an offset yoke right here. And we bent it in a specific way according to this diagram, which comes with the, land, uh, the, the, the strut part of the kit. And that shows you exactly how to bend this landing gear so that the wheel will end up in the right position. The position right over the center of the airplane. And because of that, the landing gear leg is very close to the side of the fuselage here. And this side hasn't been taped yet, but there's not much room to hold any tape. And when the landing gear hits the ground, it's going to bend back. And you can see down here, the wire bends away. It's not supported very well. So what we're going to do is add a very small piece of plastic tubing through a hole in the fuselage that I've already made right here. You can see that tubing. You push it in and it provides support for the landing gear. It's still going to be taped and we're going to glue that piece of tubing in and that will provide the support that's needed for this landing gear. All right, now as you can see here, the model is sitting on its landing gear, but I've installed the very lightweight GWS style wheels that many of us have used on small lightweight airplanes. And the plane is sitting at the proper angle, but those wheels kind of look ridiculous. I hope you'll agree with me. That's not what we want to see on our models. So in a minute, I'm going to show you how to transform this plane into a scale model with our 3D printed wheels and wire strut covers. Okay, and at this point I'm going to show you how we can transform this airplane into a really nice scale looking model with the addition of a couple of accessories. First, I'm going to put strut covers on these bare metal gear legs which look too skinny. What are strut covers? They're simply small plastic parts that we designed that go around the wire and provide the illusion of a larger strut. They weigh almost nothing and they're installed with a little bit of glue. We're using some foam tack. So I'll start with the nose gear and uh, bear with me here because I gotta put a little bit of glue on the strut to hold the two parts together. Um, I'm doing this off camera because it's hard to do it in front of the camera, but I'm putting a little bit of glue on the edge of the strut 
to hold it here. And you can see this wire has been bent precisely to match the strut. And it just goes in here and slips in there. And the glue is going to hold it. Then the other piece, which goes around the other side, putting a little glue on to hold it, goes on here like this. And it fits around the wire just about perfectly. And I'll move it around so you can see it a little better. All right. I'm also going to do the main gear. The main strut has what goes through the hole there. There we go. Do the one on the other side. On this plane, the scissor links face backwards. So you have to make sure the parts are arranged correctly so that you'll have the right side on. Mm. There we go. Now I'm do the other, the outer side. I'm just smearing a little bit of glue on to hold it. Okay. This one goes here. Another one on the other side. Just putting a little bit of glue on. Okay. The glue is along the strut here to hold it against the wire. And like I said, I'm just putting a little bit on to hold it. If I was doing it permanently, I'd, I'd be a little more careful with applying the glue. Now there's going to be a seam line on this strut where the two halves come together. This can be easily taken care of with a little bit of filler and then sanded when you're done. I'm going to give you another view here so you can see these struts. Okay, now with the three struts on, the wheels can go on. Nose wheel, this is a 3D printed wheel with tread. The main wheel also has tread. The wheels are rubber and they're kind of squishy. Not sure if you can see that. But they're soft. And these wheels I've set they're mag wheels that have an insert in the inside to make it look like there's a brake drum in the middle. So they're not see-through like the nose wheel. The nose wheel has a mag on both sides so you can see through it. Just like the real plane. Okay, now with all three wheels on there, now it looks the way it's supposed to. Instead of a bare wire, you have a strut with a detailed wheel with the mags and the tread. And here's the main wheel. Same thing. I haven't put a hubcap on it or to hold it on the axle yet, but that's the last step so that it stays in the right position. All right, now a few minutes ago I showed you what it looked like with the plain wire gear. Now you can see it with the struts and 3D printed wheels attached. And this plane looks a lot better. If you look at those main gears, it's hard to argue with how well that looks. 
I hope that you enjoy this little demonstration to show what a little bit of detail can add to a very simple park flyer. In this segment, what I'm going to demonstrate is how to install our 3D printed spinners. Now the spinners need to have a prop adapter. You can see the motor here is installed on the airplane. It's been recessed a little bit so that the propeller will be in the right position when it's finished. But um, the, prop the prop adapter fits over the shaft of the motor like that. Then the spinner back plate is put on. Then the propeller. Now the propeller, most of them will have to be drilled out to the right size for this adapter. Like that. And then the nut simply tightens it together. Okay, now I've finished tightening the prop adapter off camera because I needed to use both my hands to grip the parts with a pair of pliers. But I've tightened it down, it's nice and secure. And now the cone of the prop adapter simply snaps on like this. You hold the plane and push. Like that. And it's snapped on. How do you remove it? You put a screwdriver in here and twist. And it comes right off. So it's very easy to put it on and off. So it's secure and lightweight and doesn't require any hardware on the spinner itself. Now what I'd like to show you next is a little trick with this plane and that is how do you steer it without the steerable nose gear. Well what I've done is we've plugged one motor into the throttle channel and the other motor into the auxiliary channel of the receiver and then mixed the two channels together so that both throttles work together. Then using the additional mixes on the transmitter, I've mixed those two channels with the rudder so that when I hit the rudder, it increases the throttle on one channel in one direction and when on the other direction, the other uh, motor will increase the throttle. And so that way, this model will steer using differential thrust, which is very effective on the ground. You don't particularly need it in the air unless you want to do some really wild aerobatics. So uh, the model doesn't have working rudders. So using the rudder to control the throttle is a good way to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how this works. First, I'm going to turn on the motors, and then operate the rudder. Watch what happens. Remember the plane's upside down. I'm not moving the plane, the throttle is.